the snowy upper slopes of Mont Blanc. At 4,808 metres, it's the highest summit in the Alps. Along with its adjacent peaks, it forms an elevated tract of continental basement. Let's explore the geological structure of this dramatic area. So on this old geological map, we can see the arc of the Alps. And here at its apex is Mont Blanc. Let's zoom in. So here's the key. The subalpine chains are crumpled up sedimentary rocks the cover to the European continent and the basement, the crust itself, is exposed in these massifs, the Mont Blanc Massif and the Aigui Rouge Massif and they're separated by a tract of Jurassic sedimentary cover that's long been called the Chamonix Syncline. But despite being studied and visited for well over two centuries, the tectonic structure of Mont Blanc and its surroundings remain controversial. Well, that lot over there is the Aigui Rouge. You can see the ski infrastructure running up into that ground up there. One basement massif. Behind me, well, I've just walked in front of the Chamonix syncline, running down through there with the houses in the bottom of the valley. But over here, well, that's the Mont Blanc massif. You're looking onto the Chamonix Aigui, classic climbing country. And the reason it's classic climbing country is it's made of granite. So this is a chunk of the Mont Blanc granite. It's a late uh, Variscum, late Hercinian granitoid. Rather nice aplite running up through it here. So uh, typical fasces for the rocks of the heart of the Mont Blanc Massif. So let's go and look at the Aigui Rouge Massif a companion piece of elevated continental crust. And this outcrop has been exposed as the glaciers have retreated over the last few years. Much of the Aigui Rouge Massif are banded gneisses. Continental crust formed and then deformed in the Hercinia or Variscan orogeny. So a whole set of gneisses. These are metasediments, really high grade, almost migmatitic and highly sheared. Fairly typical of Aigui Rouge Niso's basement. It's a deformed granitoid, really good fabric running through, defined by, well, bands of quartz and felspar, but the felspar is really strung out. So it's a high temperature deformation fabric and it's Hercinian in age. And we could demonstrate that if we go up the hill. When we go up there, we'll find the unconformity that separates this Hercinian basement from the Triassic base of the Mesozoic sedimentary cover.
some of the hills of the Aki Rouge are a bit rugged. Anyway, having climbed up here, we get a fantastic view of the unconformity and the Triassic cover to the Aki Rouge basement. Just there. Really simple, just gently inclined off towards the west. So, a really clear illustration that at least in this part of the basement massifs, there's no real alpine deformation apart from the uplift to get the Triassic rocks to 2,900 meters above sea level. So, an unconformity at the base of the Mesozoic. And you can trace the sub-Triassic unconformity all the way over to the west. And out there, heading into the subalpine chains, you can grow out the stratigraphy through the Trias, Jurassic and Cretaceous until you reach the top of this hill and those brown rocks are tertiary turbidites. So let's come down off the hills of the Aigu Rouge and look at the tract of rocks that separates it from the Mont Blanc Massif, the Chamonix Syncline. Well, down in the valley bottom here, there's not a lot of outcrop, as ever, in most of the alpine terrain. It's worth getting out above tree line to find some rock. Down here, it's just a bit of a jungle. So, let's get up there and find some rock above the tree line. So up there is the Mont Blanc Massif, high mountains. Over there, in the cloud, is the Aigu Rouge Massif, and separating them is the Chamonix Valley. And geologically, it's a slice of Jurassic sediments, and they're soft and they're easily eroded out. So this structure is called the Chamonix Syncline, and it separates these two distinct basin massifs. So if you come at the problem from Switzerland, you tend to draw cross sections like this that really show a, a more or less symmetrical structure across the syncline. So this is the Chamonix syncline structure. If you spend time looking at uh, basement structures in France, many people would tend to infer the presence of pre-existing normal faults and that the basement massifs were essentially the uplifted footwall blocks to half graben that then become inverted and squashed during alpine tectonics. Others interpret the Mont Blanc Massif to be carried on a major thrust and shear zone, with the Chamonix syncline in its footwall. So let's visit the rocks of the syncline. So I'm stood on boulders that are the basement of the Mont Blanc Massif. The little hill over there in the distance is the edge of the Aigu Rouge Massif. So the ground and most of this grass and heather covered hillsides forming this big bowl is the Chamonix Syncline. And you can see that it makes this sort of badlands collapsy terrain. And it tells us that most of these rocks here are slates, they're Jurassic uh, mud rocks and marls. Uh, but there are some thin limestones as well. Uh, one of which lies directly against the far Aigu Rouge basement, and you could trace it as a band running across the hillside over there. Well, we could go over there and have a look at the state of the deformation in those limestones. So these Jurassic limestones right up against the Aigu Rouge Massif. 
really strong fabric, isn't there, coming down like this, but there's actually a good linear fabric as well coming down, almost down deep, all the way through here. So, dip slip shearing against the EU's massive. But what of the rest of the Jurassic strata? These are dominated by shales with thin competent horizons and they're cleaved. Here bedding is near vertical and the cleavage verges west. But further along the track we find the same rocks This time, bedding dipping east and cleavage verging that way too. So vergence changes and that's indicative of folding. Here's an interpretation. And if we use cleavage as a proxy for the axial surface, then the sin form is folded too, perhaps pushed back as the Aiguille Rouge rose to the west. So pretty tightly, strongly deformed in the Chamonix syncline. And now we can turn our attention to the adjacent Mont Blanc Massif and head up into the higher ground. So this is the outer edge of the Mont Blanc Massif and there's this really obvious fabric dipping very steeply back into the Massif. Now, the significance of that fabric is really controversial. Is this a fabric that's inherited from the Vriscan orogeny and it's just been tilted over as the Mont Blanc Massif is folded? Or is it part of an alpine shear zone that's carried the Massif up over the syncline? Well, let's scuff around some of the rocks around here see if we can make sense of that controversy. So quite a lot of this tract up here consists of these pale rocks, they're slightly sheared granitoids and um, well there's a bit of a fabric in them but actually if you look elsewhere in this Things get really platy indeed. So let's continue up the path and see if we can find some more sheared rocks. So other rocks up here consist of this rather more schistose material, chloritic, rather sheared looking stuff. Well, here's this slab behind me here is a schistosity surface and there's a really intense stretch delineation that's going down dip so intense dip slip shearing in the fabric so here's the main schistosity with its down dip lineation so we look on this face let's look for some shear criteria these are relict clasts of felspar with tails of quartz and mica and chlorite and their asymmetry implies a shearing top to the left, that's westwards. And here's another with the same shear sense. So, top, up, that way. So the Mont Blanc Massif carried up, out, over the Chamonix syncline. So let's continue to explore the margin of the Mont Blanc Massif and turn our attention to the Argentier Glacier Basin.
Okay, so we've come up into the Argentier Glacier Basin and we can still see the on the hillside up there going up onto that rather rough ridge we can still make out the fabric in the Mont Blanc basement but as we go up the valley to that peak there which is the Aiguille de Chardonnay and further up to that little bit of residual glacier well we're losing the fabric it looks far more massive well what's that Well, as a friend of mine once said, in terrain like this, it's best to let nature do as much of the sampling as it can. And so we've got a big boulder that's come down out of these mountains here, and it shows, well, some spectacular big xenoliths in here within this granite. There's a weak fabric, but pretty much this is undeformed-ish granite. Rocks like this make up the heart of the Mont Blanc Massif. So we're actually in the transition zone here between the rather low grade shear fabrics that we saw earlier down in the flank of the ma Massif and the granites that lie further up in the hills. And uh, we're in this material that's really massive looking, but actually it's got a fabric coming down like this. And actually, if you look in this shady area, you can see it really nicely where it's not got lichen on. So, a fabric in here that's picked out by pulled out feldspars as well as quartz and everything. So it's quite a high temperature shear fabric. Almost certainly for risk and hard to be an alpine fabric. So the basement at large has these Variscan fabrics as well as probable alpine fabrics. And the challenge always is to discriminate between them. In this case here, it's straightforward because we've got these aligned feldspars. It's a high temperature deformation fabric, therefore Variscan. The rocks here never saw these kinds of temperatures during the alpine orogeny. Elsewhere, it could be more difficult. So let's continue along the western flank of the Mont Blanc Massif and look for another section where we can see the relationships between the Massif and the Mesozoic rocks of the Chamonix syncline. Well, come down to the southern end of the Chamonix Valley. Previously, we were up at the far end in those grassy slopes. And the Mont Blanc Massif is the range of hills there in the cloud. Uh, that patch of clouds is obscuring the Aiguille Verte and the group of the Drew. So the Chamonix Valley comes down and we've got this tract of Jurassic sediments and it's bound in the shady areas over there on the left by the Aiguille Rouge Massif, leading up to the hill at the top, which is Le Brévent. So, down here, let's see if we can see if we can repeat the same sort of story as we saw further back of the valley up there. So let's continue up this trail and see what we can find. So, these are the Jurassic very fine grained carbonates. The Jurassic limestones bedding, really obvious, isn't it? Dipping down like this. Interestingly, it's much more gentle than it was at the far end of the valley. Gently inclined down towards the Mont Blanc Massif. And if I look really carefully in here, don't have to look that carefully actually, I can see there's cleavage like that dipping slightly more steeply down towards the Mont Blanc Massif. So the Virgins is top out that way, out towards the uh, west. So nice structures, simple structures just here. So, 
dark black slates interbedded with the limestone we've just seen down there. So, fairly typical basinal Jurassic strata. Not hugely deformed. Well, that's rather special, isn't it? Achy to midi, almost all the chamonix achy out of cloud. The Drew still in cloud. Basement. Let's see if we can find a contact though between these Jurassic sediments we're still on here on the path and that high ground geology up there. The tectonic contact between the Jurassic strata and the sheared basement rocks of the Mont Blanc Massif cuts through the col. The basement's on that far hillside and it's shown on the geological map. A zone of marlinite in the basement depicted by that cross hatching. We've got up here to the Basement rocks part of the Mont Blanc Massif. Let's have a look and see what state they're in. So here we go. Mont Blanc basement. <sighs> Doesn't look terribly happy. It's got a really good fabric you can see coming down this, a planar fabric going into the, the outcrop. And here's basically sort of darkish green isn't it it's essentially almost a chloritic schist but actually it's very strongly sheared and there's little lumps of felspar just tracking around in it which gives it a slightly speckledy look so these are mapped as marlinites you could call them marlinites you could call them chloritic filonites but they are shear zone rocks intense deformation along the margins of the Mont Blanc massif a shear zone putting the massif against the sedimentary cover of the Chamonix syncline. So that more or less concludes our tracing of the Chamonix syncline and the shear zone that carries the Mont Blanc massif over the Mesozoic cover of the Chamonix syncline. But actually the structure continues, our story stops here, the structure continues in that direction there. So that saddle is the tectonic contact between basement rocks and the Mont Blanc Massif, forming the shadowy steep ground that overlooks it, and the grassier slopes that lie down there to its right of the saddle, and on through to those ski slopes in the far distance. Well, all that ground there is Mesozoic cover. The Chamonix syncline is a tight structure, doesn't exist as you go further south. The whole thing opens up and the Aigui Rouge Massif plunges down below. So we have a broad area of deformed Jurassic rocks. And we only see the Cretaceous right over in the distance when we get over to the Chaine des Aravis. But that's a story for another day. So the evidence points to the Mont Blanc Massif being carried by a major thrust shear zone. From outcrop alone, it's hard to say what its deep structure might be, how far the Jurassic rocks continue to depth, but information comes from a curious source. The Chamonix Crystal Museum contains spectacular examples of mineralization from all across the Mont Blanc Massif. And these specimens have come from sub-horizontal fractures, part filled by these stunning quartz crystals. The fluids that source this mineralization are believed to have come from buried Jurassic rocks, buried beneath the Mont Blanc Massif.
So the rocks of the Chamonix syncline presumably therefore continue at depth beneath almost the entire massif. And the massif in turn has been carried by a major thrust. The Mont Blanc Massif, uplifted by crustal scale thrust tectonics, worn down by glaciers to produce the spectacular peaks we see today. <laughs> 